Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is incredible. I wanted to show you this cute little monkey here. This is actually that super pastel Cine Lesser that was actually kind of that purplish lavender look. Well, it shed out, it looks absolutely incredible. And you guys know that we've had these kind of purplish kind of looking animals that you guys have seen. But today, we actually hatched out some baby cluberts that are legitimately purple. I was so excited the other day when these guys pipped out because you guys know that I like crazy colored animals blue and silver and all kinds of stuff. And how about purple? That's right. I know there's been times where I've taken a little bit of liberties on uh, the purple snake part, but these guys truly are purple. These are what they call lavender snow calkings. And I'll be honest with you, this one still has a little bit of pattern. You can see the banding and all these actually have some banding. A normal lavender calking looks like this. You can see like yellow banding in it, right? Now the snows actually are just two-tone purple. And every now and then, we will have some that hatch out purple with no patterning at all. But nevertheless, these guys are definitely purple lavender snakes. This isn't clickbait. This isn't, oh my gosh, look at I've got a purple snake. I really do have a purple snake, guys. This is it, and, and think about that. Purple snake, I mean, that just is crazy to me that there can actually be a snake that is purple. And that's what these guys are. Absolutely wonderful animals. And like I said, we have a couple clutches of these that should be hatching as well that shouldn't have any pattern. So they'll be purple just like this, but none of the banding, just solid purple. I mean, how absolutely incredible is that? And what basically is a double recessive mutation. The lavender is a type of albino, like a T positive, tyrosine positive albino. And then there's actually a melanistic or a chocolate version that causes the purple like that together. So absolutely wonderful, excited. I couldn't be more happy that these guys hatch. And like I said, we have a handful of other clutches that probably will be even better than this in the Lavender Snow Project. So Big Mama, of course, are our leopard tortoise that I got from a buddy of mine. Of course, we have Franklin over here. We have Steve over here. And they breed all the time, but I never thought much of it. To be honest with you, we didn't even put any spots for her to lay eggs or anything. And guess what? Today, she laid an egg right here. Not sure if it's for a live candle. It's got some pink in it, but I don't see a network of veins. But the fact is, these guys can take up to 14 months to hatch. So I'm assuming you probably don't see a lot in the beginning. And then as time goes on, you start to see more network of veins and growth and stuff like that. No idea if this is going to hatch but it's pretty cool, the first tortoise egg that I've ever had. I've never bred tortoises before, so we'll probably end up putting a spot in here with some dirt where she can dig, because chances are pretty good. If she laid one egg, she's got more eggs in her, so we'll have an area where she can actually dig and see if she can deposit any other eggs that she has, but pretty cool, right? I mean, unexpected, definitely didn't think this was gonna happen. Uh, we now have one egg, and who knows, maybe 14 months from now, we're gonna have a cute little baby leopard tortoise. We got some baby gargoyles. It's been a couple weeks since we've had some hatchlings of these guys. Um, this one is really cool looking though. This one that's still kind of hanging out in the egg. It's got a lot of orange on it already. Uh, so with these guys, a lot of the times, if they start out with a little bit of color, it's going to keep developing and get brighter and brighter. So that one I'm excited to watch grow. This is cool too. This is out of, um, the female doesn't have a name, but Captain Spalding is a red and orange stripe. And then the female is a red blotch. So it'll be interesting to see what these guys end up being. I'm in the dungeon. Guess what time it is. Egg time, egg time, egg time. Egg time. And this is a pretty exciting clutch. I'm not going to lie to you. This is actually a banana spider ball python. And you guys know how much stuff I want to start working with the Lori project. So we actually bred the Lori into this banana spider. I just think that that Lori being the darker morph with a banana could be really, really cool. So I wanted to get this going. And I got to be honest with you. Sometimes it's almost embarrassing for me to tell you this. But believe it or not, this is the first banana female I've ever had that laid eggs. Now, I produce hundreds and hundreds of banana ball pythons, but they've always been males bred to other things. I've never actually had a banana clutch. This is my first ever banana clutch from a female. So let's go ahead and see how many eggs she has. All right, mama, come on, let's go ahead. And I, again, love the fact that now that we have the cocoa bedding in here, the reptile prime, it is definitely cool to see them nest. And like I mentioned, much easier for me to get the eggs too, because they don't stick to the paper, obviously. And the paper was good for us to try to make sure that we kept things really clean and sanitary and stuff like that. But we're excited to kind of move on to the next thing. And like I had mentioned before, we're gonna be adding some kind of more enrichment into the cages over the next month or so. So regardless, we have two, four, six eggs, which is pretty awesome. I mean, just think about banana lorry, banana lorry spiders, banana lorry, all kinds of stuff. I mean, it's gonna be incredible. And this is just the stepping stone to the next thing. I mean, can you imagine a banana super lorry leopard pinstripe? 
Oh, yeah, that's gonna be pretty amazing. So let's get these in the incubator. We have one more clutch to pull. Then this next clutch is just back to those kind of kind of lavendery animals, right? This is a big old pastel girl that looks like she's on a beautiful clutch eggs. And she was just bred to that pewter lesser. So again, we can get those kind of lavendery cool babies from these. That super pastel lesser cinnamon, that purpley thing. So regardless, let's see how many eggs this girl has. Ooh, doggy. Looks like she's got a nice clutch. Look at that. Come on, mom. I know you're upset and I get it. I totally do. But look at that beautiful clutch of eggs right there oh my gosh that's actually amazing this year has been like a dream I mean as a snake breeder I've been doing this for 30 something years and I can honestly say I don't know that I've had more fun and just kind of excitement with this stuff it's absolutely amazing of course we've got two four six eight beautiful eggs from this girl and I think the fact that you know I don't breed snakes for the money side of it kind of takes away some of the pressure so I can just enjoy it more if that makes any sense so uh, it's just been an amazing year and uh, we got a long way to go and by the way for those of you that are counting long that's 137 clutches I've been working with our crocodile monitor pretty regularly now. Right now, this is just a refresher for him. I really want him to refresh on that ball training and stuff like that. I really want him to get to, get to know that that red ball means food. That also means uh, these bad boys come off. So as I told, told you guys before, we're gonna just do a quick, quick little little feed and I'm gonna show you guys just, just the little baby steps that we're doing here. Let's get started. Seems like there's a more more positive movement forward every time. But after seeing this, this I, I think I kind of want to address that red ball a little differently now. If I separate the ball from the food, he's still got his eyes connected to the food. So I, so I want to take that away. So odds are what I'm going to end up having to try and do is maybe either scent the ball or something like that, get, get something to that realm and basically present the ball and then have the food behind it. Just like how we done with our Asian water monitor, but I felt this was just that the, that that previous method was a little safer and a little easier. Maybe things would move a little faster. That being said, I gotta get that focus onto the ball so that way we can that we can get that understanding and that and that, and that connection through. What time is it, guys? Sing along with me. Bluebird egg time, and we have a Brooks King snake here that is actually just bred to a hypo jelly Brooks King. So uh, obviously you can see Mama looks really good. We'll get this all cleaned up and stuff like that. Get her some fresh water, all that stuff, and see how many eggs she has here. Wow, holy moly. I wasn't expecting a clutch that big. This is a second clutch. That is a big second clutch right there. And the crazy thing is, is I've talked about this earlier this year, is the fact that her first clutch, 100% slugs, not even one for a leg. We switched the male up and we got all of these good eggs. That's why, again, it's so important to be on top of things. If you have a problem, switch it up and then look at this. All these eggs wouldn't be here if Lori didn't decide to switch that male up. So we've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, Beautiful eggs, I mean, that is amazing. That is absolutely stunning. Then we actually have another Brooks King here. This is actually a Het Whiteside as well as Het Aneurythristic, bred to an Aneurythristic Het Whiteside. So we could get some Andre Whiteside, some Andres, all kinds of stuff like that. Let's see what's going on here. Oh, a little bit of a mixed bag on this one. This one's got some good eggs and uh, quite a few bad eggs, actually. Now that I'm looking at it, the more I look at it, the more bad eggs I see and the less good eggs I see. I do see two good eggs, and then all the rest of these are just slugs here. Mama looks really good and stuff. 
stuff like that too, which is fine, that just happens. So we'll go ahead and get her cleaned up, get her back in her cage, get her for some water, get rid of these slug eggs, probably feed it off to some lizards or something like that. And as is, just two eggs in this clutch, but that first clutch was an absolute banger. Nevertheless, uh, again, just a handful more colubrids and we're done for the year. You guys know that we're doing virtual tours now. You can get one hour, 15 minute, half hour, five minute tours. Of course, there's always the private tours, Brian tours, stuff like that. And guess what? Now we have a Bruce tour. What's going on? Hey so Bruce, guys. what can we expect on your tour? So obviously, 100% always going to be messing with some monitors when you guys are here doing a tour with me. So if you're a guy that really likes monitors or a gal that like really likes monitors, I'm telling you, you guys want to come talk to me. I will love to talk to you guys about lizards. I'm a nerd about them. Also, at that same time, just like you, man, I've been, I've, I love my spiders around here, and we'll always pull out a spider every time for anybody who wants to face their fears. That's it. That's it. So down in the description, the reptarium.com. You can go. You can book your tour with Bruce now, uh, or whoever you want to. It'll be a blast. Have another Brooks King Snake clutch hatch out, but these are kind of interesting because this was actually an anurethristic, which is that kind of black and kind of bluish look animal, bred to just a normal that was het for anurethristic. So we have a combination thereof. So this would be like a normal Brooks King. You can see it kind of has the yellow in it and stuff like that. And then you get into this animal here is kind of more black and blue, right? It's lacking the yellow pigment. That yellow pigment is what they call xanthophore. And that xanthophore is missing in the azanthic. It's also missing some of the iridophore, which is the red pigment too. As a matter of fact, it's kind of weird. Sometimes you'll see snakes like anurethristic Honduran snakes or anurethristic Brooks King snakes. They're actually lacking both the yellow and red pigments, but for whatever reason, they're just called anurethristics, and that's uh, the way it goes. But nevertheless, we have some black and blue ones. We have some normal ones, and they are feisty little monkeys here too. They are going to be out of here in a second, so I'm going to put this lid on before I lose all my snakes. I was so excited when this clutch started hatching. This is actually a tessera corn, a candy cane tessera corn, bred to a scale snake. So these are all head scaleless, but this would be considered a normal to Sarah. That one with that kind of racing stripes. And boy, look at how feisty that little monkey is right there. Oh, you're such a big bad snake. It's so funny when snakes hatch out with that attitude. I find it kind of interesting that we had a really nice mix of snakes here. Of course, we have a bunch of the Tesseras with the striping. These are the candy cane Tesseras right here. We had a really good ratio. On average, you would get about half to Sarah, that racing stripe pattern, and half normal. But it looks like the majority of this clutch is actually to Sarah, and these are all head for scale. It's my gosh, these things are absolutely amazing. And these ones right here are going to get really white and red when they get bigger. That's that candy cane line, which is a polygenically bred line, just meaning you breed the animals that have the highest white, the highest red together, generation after generation. And now I'm in trouble. All right, let's get you back in here, guys. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Back in, back in, back in, back in, back in. Tell you what, that went better than I expected. Just wanted to give you guys a little Elvis update. He's actually hanging out in the tour's pen with Matilda and the other guys, and they don't seem to bother each other. He has not passed the ball yet, but he has went to the bathroom a couple times, and he is moving around. It's all about movement, you know, getting him moving around as much as we can. Keep that oily food kind of coming through him to try to continue to pass things and so on like that. Probably next week, if he hasn't passed the ball, I'm going to take him to a vet, get an x-ray, just so we can monitor what is going on. But so far, he's doing well. His legs are working good. That's going to be the first thing that we're going to notice if he gets bound up with that ball is his legs are going to have some issues so right now he's doing great he's climbing he's hanging out loving his time with the tortoises for sure so just wanted to let you know we're keeping a hugely close eye on elvis but so far he's doing wonderful how absolutely incredible was that purple snakes guys i know that sometimes i trick you with kind of lavender snakes but these are really purple and they are absolutely incredible if you enjoyed this vlog can you do me a favor check out this playlist of a bunch of baby snakes you can roll through that as much as you want can you also do me a favor can you please support my podcast podcast channel. It's called Checking In. You can subscribe to it right over here. On this side, you can subscribe to this vlog channel and please turn those post notifications on. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Remember, be kind to someone and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.